So placing before the parliament. Okay. Now what is required and where it is not required? Required and not required. not required for circulars and instructions administrative orders those are not required to be placed before the parliament okay so what is required? Rules and regulations. Then notifications. And order. Rules and regulation, all under any section. Notifications only under the sections referred in a section 159. For example, for example, now there is a notification under section 7 and under section 11. Only for example, I'm giving you under section 7 and under section 11. Okay. So here, under section 7, the board is having the right to appoint custom port, custom airport, land custom station, coastal board, coastal port, etc., all the places. And the, for that, again, a notification is required. So notification is issued under section 7. But section 159 does not have the reference of section 7. So when notification is issued under section 7, that is not required to be placed before the parliament. But notification issued under section 11, that is required to be placed before the parliament. Right? So only for reference, I can add the title here. So section 7, this is appointment of Custom port, airport, etc. This notification is not required to be placed before the parliament. And notification under section 11, this is prohibiting export import of any article this is required to be placed before the parliament okay now, orders again, I can divide this in two parts. Under section 25, subsection 2, and any other order. So, any other order will go here, and this is required.
So does it give you more clarity? Yes, sir. That one is that one is under section twenty five of two, sir. But are they vested in the board? Neither. Order yeah. under section twenty five, subsection two, that is required yes, to be fixed. Any so, other order, not required. So, in in terms of order only, this section order only placed before the parliament. Yes. Now see the section. Yeah, there is exemption. This is every rule and regulation. Right? Yes. Then every notification issued under section 11, this example I gave you, section 7 is not mentioned here. Right? Okay. All important places are appointed by the board by the board under section 7. Okay. But that notification doesn't go to parliament. Section 11, it will go to parliament. Then this is order. Every order under such. So order is only under section 25, subsection 2. Any other order will not go to parliament. So can I presume it is clear? Order order means it's amendment or just an order. Any any they gave any clarification in the order. Like no, no, clarification. This order under section 25, this is for giving the exemption. Oh. Right. So when he, any exemption is given, so under section 25, subsection 2, the power is exercisable by the central government only under exceptional circumstances. So what are those exceptional circumstances where the exemption is being given? That matter should be brought to the knowledge of parliament. Right. Like a show cause notice has been issued and after that some order has been passed regarding recovery of the finalization of duty or assessment order for finalization of the amount of the duty. Those are also the orders, but those orders don't go to parliament. Okay. So as far as order is concerned, only one kind of order that goes to parliament. Or as far as rules and regulations are concerned, every rule and regulation, whether under the section 157, 156, 157 or under any other section, it will go to parliament. Okay. Some confusion. Hari, where is the challenge? Yes, no, sir. Clear? Yeah, clear, sir. Good enough. Good. Yes, Abhishek. What is your question? Sir, every time an exemption is granted, that means every time the, it has to be laid before the parliament. Yes. And uh, so this as exceptional circumstances, maybe like uh, a natural calamity has happened and that is why they are exempting some goods or something like that. Yes. Now I'll give you more clarity. Now section 25 referred here also. In the first line. And section 25 is referred here also. Right. Under both. So, uh, whether notification is there under section 25 or order is there under section 25. So, again, a little more elaboration only on section 25 because it is given in both the cases. In the notification also and in the order also. Okay. So, below this chart itself, you can add. This is That is the clarification regarding section 25 because that is given for notification as well as order both. when we study law how important it is to understand every word every word must be crystal clear then it will be clear for the lifetime so section 25 i'm not doing section 25 it is only reference so section 25 this is power of the central government to allow exemptions from duty. So section 25 is giving power to the central government to allow exemptions from duty. Now under this section, there are two main subsections. Now see this. 
section is long, but two main subsections okay. are there. Subsection one and a subsection two. Here comes exemption granted generally in public interest under subsection 2 this is exemption under a special circumstances. So this exemption is granted by notification. And this is by order. Okay. So what will be the difference? This is for common public. This is very specific. Right? So here, Every person who is eligible can avail exemption. Any person, whosoever. So by chance, if there is some condition is given, then exemption can the person fulfilling the condition, he can avail the exemption. This exemption, it is specific to person or consignment Okay, so why section 25 is referred under section 159, both the clauses? Because this is by notification and this is by order. Supriya Samajaya. Okay, now see the section. Again, section 159 I brought in. So this every notification issued under the section. So this section 25 is referred here. So which section actually it is referring to? Section 25, subsection 1. Right. And when it comes to order, what it is referring to? Section 25, subsection 2. Okay, so when you go into the finer points, there may be a reason for confusion. So that's why I clarified it here. Okay. Next. 159 effect of amendments. No retrospective effect unless specifically provided for. 151. Instructions. So instructions. So something may be issued by in the name of circular or something can be named as an instruction that can be issued by CBSC and it is binding effect on all adjudicating authorities. This much we had done yesterday. So now if you have any doubt pertaining to what we discussed yesterday, we can take up and then we proceed to next part. Sir? Yes, please. Sir, uh, in this uh, section 25, like anyway, it goes to parliament, right? Both subsection 1 yes. or 2. Yes. And what is the difference? It goes as a note or it's an order what is the difference sir actually the notification is made for general public it is published in the official gazette and once it is published in the official gazette then anybody mm -hmm. 
who fulfills the condition, he can avail those exemptions. But order is given okay. only for a specific situation or a specific person or a specific consignment. Once the transaction is over, exemption is over. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. So, okay. In, so in either case, it is the government revenue that gets involved because of exemption. Mm -hmm. So that's why in both the cases, matter goes to the parliament. Okay. 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 Sir. Thank you. Sir. Yes, Rahim ji. Sir, in terms of section 156, hmm. uh, the determination of duties of accessories that therefore shall be chargeable same as the articles. There was one point hmm. that is uh, subsection hmm. B. What does it mean, sir? How the classification of the goods are done? GRA. Right. In case of GRA, what is rule number five? Uh, rule number five is all about um, packing materials and accessories. Yes. And what about the what about the packing material or other accessories? When it, is, when it is coming with the product, only the product will be access, accessible for hmm. the duty. In the packing material itself, a different uh, coming as a product then the packing material will be dutiable. Actually, the classification says that if accessories are specific for a specific use, then those will be classified as if those are the whole component. Mm -hmm. but those will be considered, those will be classified under the same heading along with the goods with which the accessories are going to be used. Like mobile phone charger and battery. Hmm. So battery and charger, those will fall under the same category. In accessories. Accessories. Okay. It, it, it is, yeah. When it is a common use, maybe say electrical wire. So electrical wire will have its own classification that is not necessary for anything specific. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. Sir, uh, one more doubt, sir. In yes. this sense, hmm. suppose there is a universal charger these days which are, which are coming in. They are under a separate category, right? Hmm. They are not falling under the category of mobile phones. No, the question is, are those packed with the mobile phone or those are being sold separately? Sold separately. If they are sold separately... Then they have, then they have their own classification. Then they, then they have their own classification. Right, sir. Uh, sir. Hmm? Uh, likewise, we say we have imported uh, uh, some toy. Mm -hmm. And uh, to save the shipping cost, what usually we do, we pack the box of the toys separately mm -hmm. fold karke cartoon ke andar rakh dete hain mm -hmm. aur toys jo hai wo separately uh, cartoon ke andar rakh dete hain mm -hmm. to usse kya hota hai usse shipping cost cvm jo hai wo kam lagta hai mm -hmm. to jab hum paper file karte hain to hum jo uska box hai usko packaging box alag se declare karte hain aur jo toy hai usko alag se declare karte hain mm -hmm. So, in that case, do we toy to declare the toy or packing box to declare the packing box? No, we don't need to do it to do it. Because ultimately, what is being imported, it is the toys. And the toys are bound to be packed. So what is the need for declaration of a separate package? Uh, because the toy is in the pack box, the toy is from the toy. That's why it's different from the toy. Is the box packed in the box? हाँ उस बड़े कार्टून के अंदर जो मास्टर कार्टून है उसके अंदर पैक्ड है वो तो आप उस उसी कार्टून के क्लासिफिकेशन अलग से करके दे रहे हैं मैं समझा नहीं सर आप क्या पूछ रहे हैं आप उसी कार्टून की पैक उस क्लासिफिकेशन की बात कर रहे हैं हाँ मतलब एक जैसे मास्टर कार्टून है जिसके अंदर सौ पीस टॉय है तो सौ पीस उसका गत्ता भी है बॉक्स भी है सौ पीस बताने की जरूरत ही नहीं है ओके इज देर ए सेपरेट कॉस्ट फॉर दट पैकेजिंग नो देन वाई आर यू डिक्लेयरिंग इट सेपरेटली I got your point, sir. Okay. The issue comes when you are paying it for separately, then you need to declare that and ultimately it is the packing metal will be classified under the heading of the toys itself. Okay, sir. Got it. Thank you, sir. Okay. For that, you can refer to the rules of classification. Rule number? Which rule number one? five? Rule number 2A. 2A. Goods being? Composite? Assem unassembled, disassembled, DKD, SKD. Okay. Along with rule number 3B, where the goods and packing mm -hmm. materials are there. Okay. Hmm. 
Any other question or I proceed? So now I come to lecture number two. This is here. So this is one of the most, most important topic in the customs. And if you have not understood this chapter, then difficult to understand any other chapter. Actually, this is last page of the material given to you in lecture number one. Yesterday I had given you material. This was on the last page. So this I have incorporated as the first page in the second lecture. And the material for second lecture is so vast that this lecture cannot be completed even in six hours. So this material will be used for next two, three lectures. Okay. All of you have this material? Yes, sir. Hmm. First thing is that no tax can be levied unless it is authorized by the constitution. No tax can be levied unless it is authorized by the constitution. Okay. So here is power to make laws who can make the laws power to make laws this is given under the constitution of india constitution of india in this constitution also the powers are given under schedule number seven. Power to make laws under the constitution of India given in schedule number seven. In schedule number seven, there are three lists given. List 1, List 2, and List 3. List 1 is called as Union List. Union List. This is called as State List. And this is called as concurrent list. In list number one, here the list is of subjects on which only central government can make law. Subjects on which only the central government can make law. In this case, subjects on which only a state government can make law generally. The list on which the state government can make the law, but I've used the word generally. Why? Emergency powers of the central government. Certainly emergency powers are there. In addition to that, by chance if the state is under precedent rule, Or two or more states make as application to the central government that this is a common subject for us and you make the law for both of us. 
So generally, the state government will exercise the right, but in a given situation, these are the subjects on which central government can also make the law, but conditional. Same is this. Under this, the central and state government both can make laws any example for this concurrent list here not right now yes education so, education is uh, can uh, is in concurrent list yeah, but is there but uh, still some of the states have not accepted it. In this, what happens, both have the right to make the law. State government can also make, central government can also make. And if the central government has made the law, then, then the state cannot make the law without the permission of central government. There are a number of terms and conditions which are prevailing with this. So why I have given all this is the charging of tax on import and export, who's having the right? Central government. Only the central government, right? And where the central government can make the law? First list. Yes. Union list. Right. In this city in power is left. So residual power is left. Hmm? Residual power. Residual power is also there. This is out of this list. No? So okay. 83. Serial number 83. Or schedule of list number 1. I think you can Google that. Schedule, schedule 7, the Union List of the Constitution of India, and you will find entry number 83, which is talks about tax on import and export of the goods and services. background noise coming. Not able to hear you. Sir, in state list. Can somebody check, please? Where is it? Is it Yes, sir. Now it's better. Hmm. So please keep your mics on mute as and when you need to talk, please unmute yourself. Okay. So this is only to give you a background idea that central government gets the authority to make the law for the car, for the imposition and collection of the custom duty by virtue of powers given to it under entry number 83 of list number one of schedule number seven of constitution of India. Okay, so the authority to levy and collect the tax on imported export given to central government by constitution of India. Now see the first line. What is written here in constitutional background? Entry number 83, list number 1, schedule number 7. Legislate and collect duties on import and export of goods. Is this clear? Okay. Now, from which date this act is effective? From which date this act is effective? So here we are writing Customs Act 1962. But from which date it is effective? 1st February 1963. 1st February 1963. Right. In the year 1962, it was introduced in the parliament. And after completion of the entire process of lower house, upper house president signature, then the date of implementation notified, it came to 1st day of February 1963. So that is the date of applicability. Now, preamble, preamble means what? Talks about the nature of that particular law, how it goes. It, it gives the definition. Actually, that is the objective of the act. What is the purpose yes. of the act? Yes. Right. But that this purpose does not actually explain. This is an act to consolidate and amend the law relating to customs. So, amendment is required to suit the old situation. 
and consolidation means so many old laws have been clubbed into single law. So before this Customs Act 1962, the levy of the duty on, on import and export was governed by different laws. Sea Customs Act, Inland Bonded Warehouse Act, Land Customs Act, Aircraft Act, those different acts were there. So first three acts completely gone. Sea Customs Act gone, Inland Bonded Warehouse Act has gone, and the Land Customs Act has gone. And as far as Aircraft Act is concerned, Section 16 is gone because of introduction of this act. So these four acts, those have been repealed. Extent of repeal. Repeal means no more effective. No more effective from since this is 1962. First day of February. First day of February. First February 1962. Right. So since the, this act became applicable, these acts have gone. So actually these acts are listed in schedule number one of the customs act itself. That is section 161. What is the last section of the customs act? This is the last section. That after the implementation of this act, these act will get be will get repealed. Okay. So whatever import was there, whether through the sea route or through the inland inland bonded warehouse or land route or aircraft, all those were chargeable. And if you have read the other law, Indian Tariff Act, the rate of duty was given therein. Right. So these all those these acts have gone because of introduction of this act. So here from begins the act properly. So is everything clear till now? Devan, should you have any other question? No, sir. Thank you, please. Okay. Any other participant, any other question? So, uh, so the Sea Customs Act and the Inland Bonded Warehouse Land Customs Act, mm -hmm. all this together is consolidated into Customs Act now? Yes, all of those have been brought into one single act. Okay. Sir, one more general doubt. Hmm. The doubt is that in case of the remembrance, we need to see the uh, act and its applicability 